We're also looking at shares of Fisker extending losses in pre-market trading after reporting a huge revenue miss in the third quarter results. The electric vehicle startup also slashed its full year production forecast as it struggles to ramp up deliveries to the U.S. This comes as other EV makers like Tesla, GM, Lucid, they have warned of slowdowns in the market. Tesla CEO Elon Musk pointing to higher rates as one of the contributing factors in the company's latest earnings call. You're taking a look at shares of Fisker, ticker symbol FSR here this morning, taking a hit on the head. It's down by about 17% here in pre-market trading. And one of the huge things to watch, of course, is the continued price wars, but also how much that is going to impact margins. And at the same time, you've got to be delivering, producing and delivering vehicles. And that's where if you're not a Tesla, if you're not a Lucid, even if you are a Lucid, you've struggled with that delivery and then production as well on the same side. Does Fisker need to be in this market? And it's not, I'm not trying to be flippant. Uh, you have a, you have a, well, we have uh, a major ramp up in EV production in this country, Ford, General Motors, and they're not putting out garbage. These are credible cars with strong mileage or, or range capabilities, amazing in-feature uh, technology. You have Polestar out there, I think, grabbing a lot of market share. Tesla doing what Tesla does, now trying to lower the cost of its production. So we come out with more, I think, cheaper vehicles, the Cybertruck. I just don't know where Fisker plays in this market longer term. And if it does, and I look at the finances of this company, here's a company in the past three months that blew through almost $305 million in cash. And I think you're looking at Fisker next year and why the market remains so concerned and why you're seeing the stock down almost 20%. There's probably liquidity concerns uh, regarding Fisker. Now, they, I think they noted on this release that they have $650 million in total liquidity, but at some point to bring that vision to life by Henrik Fisker, they're gonna need another capital raise. And at what point does that person or that bank say, we're not giving you this capital, it's a Tesla market and we don't really care what you're doing. And they're struggling already, right? We talk about a lot of the fact that production supply, that has obviously been a massive issue, not just for Fisker, but for so many of the smaller players within the EV market, just simply because of how much it costs to produce an EV. So here you have some of the reaction on the street this morning and a lot of that being tied back to deliveries and mm -hmm. their potential here to ramp. Uh, Morgan Stanley, Adam Jonas there, one of those analysts weighing in right away on this report saying that ocean deliveries are ramping, but so is its inventory. Obviously not something that Fisker wants to see at this time. Looking ahead, he's saying that the direction of the stock is going to be driven by their ability to ramp ocean deliveries. Does, does Tying have, it does, all back to demand. Does he have a Fisker? Whether does or not that's Fisker? there. Do we know? It. He never comes on with us. What's with this guy? What's with this guy? Yeah. Come on with us, Adam Jones. I bet you he's probably a Tesla. Probably a tennis guy. Tesla, no. Guy. Maybe he drives a Ford pickup yeah, truck, exactly. right? exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of people do. Uh, look, just key to remember here, this was a company that went public via SPAC. Um, of course, the kind of marker to remember that they go public at, or at least that the SPAC uh, and then the D-SPAC takes place at $10 usually. And then this company traded eventually as high as $28.50 a share. You look at it today, it's trading at about $3.39 before the market opens.